Today we bring you the summary of the movie The Snow Society, this is a Spanish dramatic film from 2023, directed and written by J.A. Bayona, based on the book of the same name by Pablo Viersi, which in turn is based on the documentary homonymous of Gonzalo Aragon, which recounts the accident of Flight 571 of the Uruguayan Air Force in the Andes Mountain Range in 1972. The film is divided into four parts, which correspond to the four seasons of the year in the Southern Hemisphere, spring, summer, autumn and winter. Each part shows the challenges, decisions and emotions of the survivors, who face death, hunger, cold, injuries, avalanches, internal conflicts and the hope of being rescued. The first part, spring, begins with the plane taking off from Montevideo on October 12, 1972, and presents the main characters, their family and friendly ties, and their expectations for the trip. Only 29 of the 45 passengers survive the impact, among them Numa Turcati. The plane makes a stopover in Mendoza, Argentina, where it is delayed due to bad weather. The next day, the plane attempts to cross the Andes, but crashes into a glacier, breaking in two. The film begins with Numa Turcati's narration starring Enzo Vogrincic, one of the passengers of Flight 571. Numa says that he is a 24-year-old law student. He went on the trip to Chile at the invitation of his best friend, Pancho Delgado. He convinces Numa to take the trip before he goes back to study and they can't see each other. Numa didn't play rugby, but soccer, and he barely knew the rest of the passengers. Nando Paradu stars Augustin Pardella. He is a 22-year-old student and rugby player. He traveled with his mother, his sister and his close friends, Panchito Abel and Guido Magri. After the accident, he was unconscious for three days due to a severe concussion. His sister Susanna Paradu, 20 years old. She was seriously injured after the accident and died hours before the end of the search for the plane was declared. Felipe Ramuzio as Diego Storm. 20-year-old medical student. He survived the accident and, hours later, saw that Nando Paradu was alive and suggested moving him to a less cold place, saving his life. After the crash, survivors realized they had a small battery-powered radio in the wreckage of the plane. Roy Harley, engineering student, was in charge of fixing it. Radio was the survivor's only source of news and communication with the outside world, and became their connection to the rest of the world. However, the radio's batteries ran out quickly, and there was no way to recharge them in the remote Andean location. In an effort to keep the radio working and seek help, the survivors disassembled the radio and examined its components. They discovered that the batteries were the rechargeable type, which gave them an idea. They used cables from the crashed plane and built an improvised charger by connecting the radio to the plane's battery. This ingenious arrangement allowed them to recharge the radio's batteries and keep it operational. Thanks to the radio, survivors were able to hear reports of the ongoing search and rescue, giving them hope and confirmation that they were not forgotten. Matthias Reckalt 19-year-old medical student and rugby player. After the accident occurred, he assumed the role of doctor and provided care to the injured. Gustavo Zerbino. 19-year-old medical student and rugby player. He participated in the first excursions. In addition, he was responsible for caring for the wounded and preserving the memory of those who died in the mountains, collecting their personal objects in order to deliver them to their families. Diego Vigetzi as Marcelo Perez del Castillo. 20-year-old architecture student and captain of the old Christians Club rugby team. After the accident, he assumed leadership of the group. He rationed groceries and organized work groups. Esteban Kukarikska as Fido Strauchiriosti. 24-year-old agronomic engineering student. He invented the ice melting machine and sunglasses. He traveled with his cousins Eduardo Strauchiriosti, Daniel Fernandez Strouch and Daniel Shaw Uriosti. The three Strouch cousins took on a critical leadership role in organizing the group. Valentino Alonso as Alfredo Pancho Delgado. 24-year-old law student. 
He was invited to the trip by Gaston Costamal and convinced his best friend Numa Turcati to accompany him. As a result of the accident, he suffered serious injuries to his leg. Esteban Bigliardi as 36-year-old Javier Methol. He was invited by his cousin Panchito Abel. He traveled with his wife Liliana Navarro, with whom he had four children. Paula Baldini as 34-year-old Liliana Navarro. She traveled with her husband Javier Methol, with whom she had four children. She emerged unscathed from the impact and offered comfort to the younger boys. He was one of the victims of the avalanche. The second part, The Summer, shows how the survivors adapt to their new reality, and how they face the moral dilemma of feeding on the corpses of their deceased companions. Some refuse, others accept it as a way of survival and respect for the dead. Also shown are the first expeditions made by some of the survivors to explore the terrain and look for a way out. One of them ends in tragedy, when eight of them die after being buried by an avalanche of snow that falls on the fuselage of the plane, where they were taking refuge. The survivors of the Andes began to urinate black for various reasons related to lack of food and water. The urine turns dark in color. Severe dehydration causes the urine to not have enough liquid to dilute the toxins that are eliminated when urinating. These health problems were caused by food shortages, extreme cold, and the high altitude at which they were located. The third part, Autumn, focuses on the preparation of the final expedition, which aims to cross the mountain range and find help. Nando Paradu and Roberto Canessa volunteer to undertake the feat and are supported by the rest of the group, who provide them with food, clothing, and equipment. Before leaving, Paradu and Canessa say goodbye to their friends and promise to return with help. The expedition lasts 10 days, in which Paradu and Canessa suffer fatigue, hunger, cold, injuries, and discouragement, but they also find signs of life, such as a river, a valley, and some cows. The fourth part, Winter, narrates the meeting of Paradu and Canessa with a Chilean muleteer, Sergio Catalan, Luciano Chatton, who gives them food, shelter, and notifies the authorities of the rescue. The rescue teams manage to locate the rest of the survivors, following the instructions of Paradu and Canessa, who guide them from the helicopter. The 16 survivors are rescued on December 23, 1972, and are received as heroes by their families and by public opinion. The film ends with a scene in which the survivors gather 50 years after the accident, at the place where the plane crashed, and form a human chain, remembering their deceased companions and celebrating life. In this spectacular film, director Bayona had the advice of the real survivors of the accident, who helped him recreate the most faithful and authentic details of his 12 experience. The film's makeup also reflects the health problems of the survivors, such as the raccoon sign displayed by Nando Pareto's character, caused by internal bleeding in the eyes due to a blow to the head. Rehearsals with the actors lasted 80 days and filming lasted 140 days, using various locations in Spain, Bulgaria and Uruguay. One of the most important relics in royal history is the gold watch of one of the survivors, which was found 30 years after the accident by a mountaineer and returned to its owner. The watch was the only valuable item he carried and he had received it from his father as a graduation gift. The film ends with a scene in which the survivors gather 50 years after the accident, at the place where the plane crashed, and form a human chain, remembering their deceased companions and celebrating life. We hope you liked the summary of this spectacular film. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe to the channel.